My next guest is truly a winner. She's a winner. Um, first time I saw her, I read her book out of this weekend, Sell It from Concept to Reality. I really am excited about this book I, because guess what? So many people need this book. Uh, my next guest is Living Testimony to Faith and Perseverance. She was born in Jamaica, man, and raised in Canada. A. Eh? She is the founder of Bravo's Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise. Who knew? I didn't know that. That's why I got on the show. Bring her from the from the darkness to the light. Her goal is to empower women to pursue their dreams in the new year of 2019. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation, Princess Banton Lofters. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good mor- Monday morning, right? Money making Mondays, and I'm here. Come on, happy to be on, here. You, Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, excited to have you on the phone because of the fact that uh, when my talent, uh, we have a meeting every Tuesday, and they always say, okay. Rashawn, would you like this guest? I go, I go. They said she is the young lady who founded the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise in Atlanta. Tell me about that. Tell me about I, I read the bio, but the people yeah. in public needs to hear sure. your story. Yeah, well, you know what? And it's funny that people people now, um, within the last, I guess, probably year or two, have become a little more public. So prior to that, I really kept um, a low profile. Absolutely. So and I really focused. Yeah, I, you know, I, this this thing, this dream happened for me. Um, it kind of, I, I feel like I say television chose me. I didn't necessarily chose it. And I had a passion for doing something that was behind the camera. And lo and behold, I had this little idea. And just the right place, the right time. I, I met a producer in L.A. through a friend of mine, flew out there, sat down, started talking to him about a completely different concept or a different idea that I had. And um, during that conversation, he started to talk to me about different things they were working on. And, and I was familiar or got familiar with a franchise called the Real Housewives of Orange County, which was, you know, this is 2006, six seven. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of said, you know, this is Atlanta. This show belongs in Atlanta. This is, and there was nothing like it. Nobody was taking a chance on female um, black ensembles for sure. And, you know, listen, they, they were candid and told me that, like, oh, okay, well, you know, you see, and I said, I definitely, this is something that needs to be seen. I, I can do this. Give me three weeks. And the <laughs> long as the short is, yeah, I said, you know, give me three weeks and um, believed in myself and knew that I can really come here. And, and I had only been, let me, let me say full disclosure, I am from Canada, and I had only been in Atlanta for about, I'd say almost a full year, fully. <laughs> um, yeah, so so it took a Canadian. You down here bragging and telling everybody <laughs> this show needs to be in Atlanta. I'm a Atlanta night. It needs to be here, yeah. And I believed in it. I just came back and started talking to friends and word traveled. And my second interview was Miss Nene Leakes, um, and the rest is history because she really I loved her, and I always said, "Well, who are your friends?" And I had been interviewing women anyhow. So right. there's a lot of people in the city who knew me from the very beginning when this was just a dream and a hope and, you know, sitting on my basement floor trying to find people. So Nini kind of introduced me to her friends. I interviewed them, of course. The network production company loved it. And I just kind of went with it, and the train was moving, and thank God it did. And I jumped on and was able to sell that concept 2007, and now we're in season 11. And, yeah, and now I'm kind of finally stepping out and saying, you know, listen, um, if I can do it, you know, any any anyone can, and or certainly women um, who have, you know, want to be able to pursue this type of dream. So that's my short, long version of no, how. That's it all a that's happens. a very uh, honest version because I know that yeah. uh, when you get a franchise this big, that's associated with a lot of successful franchises. Now that you're coming out of the coming out of the uh, coming from the background, do people question yeah. your role in it? Do people question your level of participation? Oh gosh. In it? Oh, listen, I will say this. I started to say this, um, and I said it before I really even realized it was a thing that people were saying, but I say, you know, you got to write your own story or else someone else will write it for you. Control your Um, narrative. Control your narrative. Yes, exactly. That was what was starting to happen. Um, Of course, people in the city, I had a big premiere party season one at the W Hotel. Mm -hmm. It was an epic party, about 800 people, all the cast, media. It was really crazy. And so clearly... Back in 2007, when I stepped up and thanked everybody for, you know, helping me to, to see my 
dream come to light and my baby and all this stuff. Right after that, I, about two years after that, I kind of stepped back. And what happened was I really, for me, it was overwhelming. The, the media, the people knowing you, the criticism. And I just personally had, did not sign up for that part. So right. I really took a big step back and focused on other projects and just kept myself quiet. Um, and so really what happened was people just started assuming, and as television started to grow, people still don't understand how television is made and sold. And a lot of times, you know, you get on a show, and I worked on the show, by the way. I worked right. on season one and two very, very, I mean, without working on it, they're really, I don't, there couldn't have been a show because I told all the stories um, with the producers, of course, but I initiated what those stories were prior to the show even selling. So I say all that to say I really did um, <clears throat> shy away from all of that and stayed away. And the, the longer I stayed away, listen, people started to just assume things like, you know, the, some of the producers who were working on the show created it, or even for lack of, of better understanding, Nene created the show. Which, listen, Nene had a huge part in bringing her talents and her gifts and other women to the show. However, there was this one young woman who just kind of stepped up and did it with the help of others, of course, um, you know, and the network saying yes. And so I just kind of started to tell my story, and now people are like, oh, yeah, I remember that. You know, and listen, there's a lot of people who um, were there from the beginning that are now very, very successful people who absolutely, are always like, absolutely. you and know, I, I, asked that I question, remember you. <laughs> I have to ask that question because sometimes, you know, in this business, what you've learned is, 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 is no word, the word humble is not a word mm-hmm. you use in entertainment. You have to be a horn, mm-hmm. uh, horn tutor, tutor. You have to be a screamer. Mm-hmm. You have to be a brand influencer, mm-hmm. social media. Because right. I, because I, I compare what you've done to what uh, another talented female producer, Mona Scott Young. Mona Scott right. Young never dropped out of the background. She's been in the never. forefront, and that's that, that was smart <laughs> yeah. on her part, you know, because absolutely very smart on her part. If everybody don't know Mona Scott Young, loving hip hop is her is her tremendous claim to fame. And uh, she's done, and she's written several books because of that success. And you're writing books mm-hmm. now. But I would say yeah. to anybody like you who's talented uh, from Jamaica, or do, what, what about in Canada did you grow up in, in Canada? I grew up right outside of Toronto, and then I moved to Toronto in my 20s. So I, I, I pretty much say Toronto because most people don't know Hamilton, Ontario, which is a really small city yeah. uh, right by Buffalo. Across yeah, the yeah Buffalo Toronto border. has a strong Caribbean African influence up there. Great city. It does. Great city. Yeah. Great city. That's my that's my city. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love it. I've been up there several times. Uh, I always tell people, you know, uh, you go up there, you can get a little bit of everything, food wise. I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie now. I'm just tell you, I go okay. up there to eat. I go up there to eat. People always say, Rashawn, you're thin as a rail. All you talk about is food. Yes, I do eat. Now let's talk about <laughs> how what got you down sure. to Atlanta. Okay, Canada, Jamaica, yeah. born it, raised in Canada. Down here in Atlanta, one year, out in Hollywood, telling everybody you've been here forever. Telling me you know everybody in Atlanta. Tell everybody you got a show idea. Went out there, yeah. found Nene Leaks. Bam, the rest is history. Ten years later, you're talking to Rashawn McDonald. Talking about, hey, you're a star. Boom. There you go. <laughs> um, well, listen, I, I actually, what brought me down here was my husband who had been recruited. He was just finishing up um, residency and finishing up his specialty, which is orthodontics. Mm. He's a doctor in orthodontics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, I kind of followed him, and here he was. It was between Miami and Atlanta. I love Miami and the weather, but Atlanta sounded good to me. Mm-hmm. And there we are. So we ended up here in Atlanta. I kind of followed him um, and, you know, kind of didn't know what I was going to do, but certainly knew that I wanted to figure out what I was going to do separate from what my husband does. I didn't want to just be a doctor. Let's wife. talk about this so, book, this wonderful book that, yeah. you, that you've written, Sell It. It's the title of it. It's called Sell It, S-E-L-L, It, From Concept to Reality. I, the reason I say this is because uh, so many people approach me about television concept, reality show concept, What's the next step? What you have to do? And you've created a book that lays down calendars, steps, yeah. create a sellable concept, use your resources, time to execute, cast is king, get social, write your treatments, synopsis, character sheet, and then you go month by month. This is wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for explaining it like that. I, you did better than me. How do you come around with me? Listen, I, um, I, I sat back and exactly what you said. People were always asking me about 
selling television. And when people started finding out what, who I was or what I did or what I accomplished, um, my Instagram kind of started picking up some traction with people <laughs> DMing me and asking me these questions. So I realized that there was a need for this information, and no one else had done it. I was shocked. Yeah. No. So wait a minute, no. people need to share this information. Um, and I was really big on allowing other people to do what I've done or at least be able to have the tools to chase their dreams. And so with simply that, I teamed up with a great friend of mine, Maya Sly, who started doing these journals and done it successfully mm-hmm. for others. Mm-hmm. And she just simply we went through it. I wrote this uh, exactly what I wanted in the planner. And, and this that's is, exactly this is what it really, is. really, really good. This is a, this is yeah. a, this is a 12 so week plan on how from start to, to sale. And it's an amazing opportunity. When we get back, I want to break this down a little bit more. I want to ask her, is she doing seminars or is she doing webinars? Because this is outstanding. I'm a fan, Princess. We'll be back with the Thanks. creator, the founder of Real Housewives of Atlanta, talking on Money Making Conversation. She's the Princess. Hi, this is Rashawn McDonald, and you're listening to Money Making Conversations. Let me tell you about Money Making Conversations, a show about uh, opportunities, a show about giving voice to people who have uh, have information that will help you win. On the phone is that exact person with information that will help you win. She's a li- living testimony to faith and perseverance. She was born in Jamaica. Outside of Toronto is where she was raised in Toronto, Canada. She is the founder of the Bravo Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise. I'm going to scream that out. She is the founder of the Bravo's Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise. Her goal is empowering women to pursue their dreams in the year of 2019. Please welcome back to the show, Princess Banton Lofters. How you doing, Princess? Great, great. Thank you for having me, like uh, I said before. I'm just saying, I'm a fan. You can, you can write that down. Rashawn McDonald is saying, I am a fan of yours because this book is fantastic. I can't tell you, it's called Sell It, S-E-L-L It, From Concept to Reality. What I need to know, are you doing any seminars? Are you doing any webinars? What are you doing out there, young lady? You are, you are, you are a strong piece of work. <laughs> uh, this is fantastic. This needs to be talked about. You, what are you doing? Thank you. Before I get hype here. I'm, I'm well, about to get hype on you in Yeah, a minute, yeah, get hype. Let's okay, do I'm it. hyped. Let's I'm hyped it. now. I'm, I'm uh, good, good, good. Listen, I'm hyped too because I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to give this opportunity to other people women, people in general who want to be able to learn how to, what are the tools to sell it? So yes, I am sell their show, sell their concept, or even be able to have things to start to to execute those things that you need to be able to walk in front of, or sit in front of an executive and know that you have things together. Um, There are so many mistakes people made that I've made that I want to uh, help people avoid making. And um, so, yes, I am definitely going to be doing more conferences, more one-on-one, um, you know, um, sessions with people to allow them to be able to know, again, how to do this. And then also conferences that are group set settings. And I'm definitely going to be doing more of those this year because people have told me that they are so necessary and they really do want the information. And I'll be announcing those dates on my Instagram. So my Instagram is probably what I use the most to get my information out. Mm -hmm. So my Instagram is producer princess, and that's where I'll start to announce dates, Mm -hmm. conferences, sessions, um, workshops, Mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So yeah, and also where people can go and purchase my planner. Okay, here's the deal, Princess. Okay, you have a 12-week uh, program here. We need to get yeah. you into a webinar right now because... Uh, okay. See, see okay, I'm, I'm, I'm about to give them advice. That's why I started this show, okay. to give people advice. I've I made a lot of money for a lot of people out there. You know that, right, Princess? That's what I, I do. I'm very right. familiar yeah, with so who so you are. We, <laughs> so the truth is tough speaking right now. So okay. now... See the thing about it is that this book is wonderful. I, I would not. I, I will keep saying this down. You can you can put this on your Instagram. So Rashawn said my book was wonderful because of the fact that so many people need to understand there is a there is a system in place. I always tell people, you know, two, and math is easy. Everybody understands math. Two plus two is four. Three plus three is six. That's math. Math. But see, in the creative space, it's the same thing. Subject verb now gives you a sentence. People need to understand that. What you've created is that language of how to produce a show. And so what, what I would love for you to do, and I would support you with my social media or anything, my, my newsletter, anything, that you, I would, you need to do a 12-week course every Monday or every Tuesday. You pick a day, and you should be mm-hmm. online telling people 
and work, having them answer them questions. As they answer questions, you're going to be selling your book too. You will be selling sure. your book. Yeah. And then you, but you'll be developing your brand. And see, people need to understand how talented you are. And the one way they find out how talented you are, when they realize you were the one who wrote this incredibly special book. And I say that because of the fact that there, a lot of people look at Hollywood, they always see the finished product. They never see that, sure. you know, that a television show, you know, 22 minutes may have been a whole week, may have been a whole day. Or you shoot a movie, maybe three months for our 90-minute film. Okay, that's a lot of work. A lot of people go into that. But to even get it to that point, how does that idea get to a point that somebody wants to buy it? Because right. everybody has a great idea. You know that. Lord knows how many times you've been at lunch. Lord knows. Somebody can find out who you are. Go, I got this idea. You go, please don't oh, tell yeah. me. Please don't tell right. me. Right. Please stop. Right. Oh, call me, please. But Bob, yeah. Bob, tell you, it'll make you a million dollars. It'll make you a million I, dollars. Please stop. I'm telling please stop. you, if I, I had a dollar, if I had a dollar. For every one of those folks walk up to you, don't mm. tell me that idea because then that's, you, know, you see it on TV similar to something. You, yes. She stole uh-huh. it from me. I told right. her to it oh, at Pascal's, a Pascal. <laughs> oh, I was in Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it was in Chick-fil-A when I was ordering lemonade. I told her about yeah. that idea. So you have to stop. Yeah. So I got to tell you this. Uh, this idea of uh, you as a talent, you coming out of the uh, out of the background to the fore- forefront on Instagram, you got this great book. How can we? How can you and I? And I'm, not, I'm busy now. I'm not trying to manage you now, but I'm also trying oh. to help promote you now because this <laughs> yeah. book this needs to be available, yeah. and you need to be the face of 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 television from a standpoint of. Uh, Webinars. How? How? Yeah. how what can I? What can we do to get this rolling? What can we do to get to this to the general public? Because see, this is available for men, college students, high school, anybody. Because once they once they realize they got to follow a book, they got to go buy the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me tell you this, and I'm so thankful that you are excited. A lot of people really are excited that finally, finally, I'm kind of stepping out and. And, you know, I credit that to my team, um, Absolutely. Sammy Hayes, who's, who's probably helping me um, get my word out, and people like you who are passionate about information and sharing that valuable information. So, yes, I definitely would love, 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 love to, to, to speak, and we can get offline and do that stuff and kind Absolutely. of figure that out. Because I definitely have been, um, you know, knowing that the information is necessary. And, and to, to, to say all of that, I'm actually... It's so vital that people get this information that I really said, once I wrote this, this first planner, I said, I've got to put out another one Mm -hmm. because people were just saying, okay, now what? You know, because what I did was I intentionally put a stopping point to that very Mm -hmm. first Mm -hmm. set of, Mm -hmm. of things to do, because as we know, people will get caught up in kind of really overwhelmed if there's too much at once. So mm-hmm. what I decided to do was, like you said, I broke it down into those first initial 10 to 12 things that they need to do that will really help them to get get to the mm-hmm. next step. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole mm-hmm. next mm-hmm. step of things that they really need to mm-hmm. not only do, but know. Um, and then for people who want to get on television, because that's really the bulk of how I really got on television, was really understanding and being able to identify good talent and I've done that my whole, since, really since the beginning of Housewives, very shortly after I fell into mm-hmm. development, which is a lot mm-hmm. of, you know, cast development or mm-hmm. show development. Mm-hmm. And cast is king. Mm-hmm. Like I said in my planner, um, you need cast in order to sell a show. And so even now I'm working on a really big show um, that we can maybe talk about at the end of this interview. But I'm going to put together another planner, that will, which will come this summer. By this summer, I should have it out. Um, it might even be out before the beginning of the summer, end of spring, and it'll be kind of a follow-up to this. So, yeah, I say all that to say I definitely will be doing more to get in front of people and really be able to, like you said, webisars and do all of that stuff to really give people the information. It, it really is necessary. Yeah, it really is. And you're the truth. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I always tell people, you know, they have people out there about how to fix your credit. They got bad credit. How to make money. Oh, they don't right. have no money in their bank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how, to, how, to, how to be a stylist dressed, look in their closet, oh, all their clothes look beat up. You're the truth. Ooh. Okay, your show been on television Thank 10 you. years, all right? You've written an amazing book. And the book I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is called Sell It, From Concept to Reality. This is based on a reality show. If you have a, that's why she talked about cast. So you could, there's a lot of people out there pitch reality shows, don't have nobody to go in the reality show. Excuse me, excuse me. You better have somebody. You, you, I got this idea for a barbershop. Okay, 
who are the people in the barbershop? Just an idea. You got to find it. You better go bring the barbershop people with you when you come in the room. Bring the scissor reel with you when you come in the room. Now, she has a 12-week process here. Week one through one through three, creating a sellable concept. Use your resources. Week four through eight, time to execute. Cast the king. That's what I'm talking about. If you got that idea, you're driving around, see some mechanics. they all different ages, three generations, young kid, grandpa, son, and father. That's a show idea. That's what you call cast as king. They all might be funny. Dad might be a Sanford and Son type dude. And you got a potential go. show. This is how it really works. Or you go to some restaurant. All oh, everybody in there fly. They're young. They're in there. It's a hip hop type restaurant. Everybody talking hip hop, looking good. Bunch of good looking people. That's a different show. That's how you get that's how you, that's, that's what you're talking <laughs> right. about. Cast as king. You gotta have a cast. And you gotta have and it don't have to be a celebrity, but it has to have that spin on it. That will be relatable. Well, here's the number one thing, everybody who's listening. Women got to want to watch the show. Don't bring them no show that just a bunch of hard-head dudes want to (laughs) watch. You're right. Women rule television. So if your idea is some horrible idea that only men want to watch, please stop. They're going to run you out that door. 18 to 49. I'm so glad you said that. There you go. There you go. 72 percent of the market, 72 percent, we corner women really run this entertainment from the viewer to the, you know, and now uh, behind the camera. So I'm really glad you said that. It's yeah. a very important point. Now, here's the other part. Nine through 12, write your treatment. I always tell people this. Here's a, this one I like it. Create your log line. A catchy log line is used to describe your show in 30 words or less. Make sure you don't forget the word hook. Here's the thing. If you still try to tell somebody your concept and you still talking, you don't have a concept. That log line is key to selling your show because they have to walk away and tell that log line to somebody else. And if they don't understand what you just said, then your idea is dead. Princess, I'm going to tell you something. This show wasn't long enough. You're a star, young lady. And we <laughs> offline. I'm going to tell Thank my you. Samantha going to contact you. There's no pressure. Okay. If you don't have time to talk to Rashad no. McDonald, Rashad busy anyway. He busy anyway. <laughs> But I got time for you, girl, because you got talent. I want to help you promote your book, thank sell you. it from concept thank to reality. You, She's from from Canada by way of Jamaica, man. Jamaica, man. I am. I am. Can I add one quick thing? Really, really quickly. I will be doing a, a show for a major cable network that I'm looking for talent. It's about family reunions. I'm going to put 